In the depths of Nephilia, he began his tale. A rebel soul who dared to challenge the veil. Welcome to Tybalt's Apprentice. I was just talking with my friend here, and he says Rafiki the Many is a terrible deck and nobody should play it. Yeah. Oh, oh, is that what I said? That what I said? <laughs> That's what I heard, but give me your 10-second pitch on why Rafiki is maybe a good deck. So Rafik, if I can sum like put it in a 10-second thing, is mm -hmm. if you want to win by turn 10, this is the deck to play. Okay. Nice. Not right. quite EDH, or is it just, you know, is it depend on the build? It's uh, this build is particular for removing a player from the game by turn six. Well, player removal is the best removal, isn't it? Yes, yes. All right. So, what cards in here make this uh, especially good? First of all, I'm going to take a second now and say, uh, welcome, super fast tortoise. Thank um, you. Thank you. I'm glad to have you on the show here with me. Um, it was, uh, some years ago that I ran into, uh, MTG Hillbilly online through arena and he mm -hmm. pointed out some of the people that he talked to like DJ Longhair, and super fast tortoise was one. And I, I'd, I'd like to say that we've become friends over the, the past, uh, past few months. And, uh, so I'm honored to have you on the show here. So having said that, what cards make this a super fast build? So Everything kind of makes a super fast build, but if you look at the list that you have on screen here, mm -hmm. you'll see everything segmented on purpose, right? Because okay. this deck, this deck's kind of bipolar, has a couple different personalities, but likes to build small creatures, right? So if you look at the exalted segment okay. over there, I see you'll here. see you'll see most of the creatures in that exalted section cost one to two mana. Then you'll have four. You have one, five, yeah, one, two, three, four, five cards that cost two mana. And you got four cards that cost four mana and above. Those are more of your wind striking exalted creatures. Okay. Right? Then, right. And like finest hour is the key card in there. Like you get two attack attack phases with that card if you attack with one creature. Nice. Um, the no other thing is one of the ways it likes to win is you can get an infect creature. Out early in the game, like for your first creature ah. game, that you want to build up, and you can okay, start over swinging here. Storm effect, yeah. And you'll notice, like all the creatures cost one and two mana, except Corrupted Conscious is not a creature. Corrupted Conscious is uh, a win, a game winning card, right? Okay. Um, most times people think you should uh, enchant someone else's creature and steal their creature. But when you got a creature swinging in for 20, sometimes it's just best to put that on your own creature. Nice. Okay. Right. So the way this deck works, in, in a nutshell, is you get a small one to two drop creature on the battlefield, then you start putting equipments and auras on it. By turn four, you should be able to cast Rafik and attack for a lot. This game, you're going to start... Yeah, this game, you're going to start uh, attacking with... Uh, your creature as soon as you can. So you play a one, two mana drop creature. You're going to attack the next turn if possible. Right? And right. you're just going to attack the damage because when a freak comes out, he's supposed to be like the game ending blow or, you know, sometimes smack an opponent for 18 damage. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> that, that never happens. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so, so let me ask you really quick. So is, is this vulnerable as a uh, as sort of a Voltron deck? It kind of has that flavor to it, but um, but you've got a lot of different creatures. So how does that work? So this deck is this style deck is very vulnerable vulnerable to removal. Hence why I want run two three creatures with hexproof. Right, I got Invisible okay. Stalker, Geist of Saint Traft, and Venethrope as creatures with hexproof on it. A um, okay. couple of those creatures are three mana cost, so that's that. That's for if you're running the slow game. Okay. I run Swift Foot Boots, Canopy Cover, Shielding Plaques, and Mask of Avacyn to help protect my creatures there, right? Mm, okay. Now, those are important. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards that either have 
hexproof or give hexproof, right? Right. And um, I did take out. Uh, I did take out Shield of Fate. I thought I updated the deck. Shield of Fate is no longer in the deck. In fact, I put heavy bat. Uh, what the? Uh, what's the name? Of this? Heavy. No, oh, I'm missing the card. It's a new card from the Fallout set. It's a uh, ah. strong back. It gives a creature plus two plus two for each aura right. and equipment attached to target creature, Ooh. and it makes your equipments and auras cost three less. It's okay, pretty solid. Strong strong back is nuts. Now you're thinking, you're thinking, um, how do we get the damage so high, right? Right. Well, there's a trick. First, first of all, I'd like you to go to the equipments, right? Equipments. Uh, is, is there equipments there, or not? Or a pump, but equipments, right there, where you see the little axe at the bottom, that whole line right there. The axe, the bottom. Right, that whole roster, right? Oh, right. You'll notice on that roster that you will see dark steel axe. Vanquisher's Axe, Bone Splitter, and Eater Virtue. They all do the same thing, just with different equipment costs. They cost ah. one mana to play. Some of them cost two to equip. Some of them cost one to equip. But they each give a creature plus two plus zero. Okay. That's important because plus two plus zero is really plus four plus zero if you have a Feek out. Ah, okay. Right? right. So you're really, so you're really trying to math it up and like do simple math and like oh if i got six damage on here that's 12 on with Rafiq. okay all right i like simple right? math i like simple math a lot <laughs> right no doubt then rancor is uh, an enchantment that's in the deck now the card i don't have for this deck is audacity which is like rancor but instead of going back to your hand audacity is mm -hmm. out in the mix but i run armadillo cloak just in case if i'm running behind i can gain a Crap oh, so, okay. But also give that evasion to get through creatures. Right. So that's right. important. With double strike, that's important. Um, three cards I'd like to list that are really good for the deck is Spectral Flight, one with the wind, mm -hmm. and Octopus Form. Spectral Flight and one with the wind are the same card. They're auras that give a creature plus two, plus two flying. Right? They're right. the same kind of card, just different names. Right. And that evasion is very powerful, and the plus two buff is important. Aquas right. form that straight up make a creature unblockable. I love so really Aquas form. Yeah, Aquas yeah, form yeah. is a is a budget staple, if you ask me. Definitely. So with with that in mind, everything else in the deck is to help you sustain your momentum in the game, so you're not being pushed out so fast, right? Right. Like right. some creatures you could pull. You got Core Spirit Dancer in the draw section. Mm hmm. Um. You got you got Sissus Harvest Hand, Saram Senior Edificer, which I'll say when you cast a enchantment spell, uh, right. you uh, you draw a card. Um, Core Spirit Dancer is the most important out of them because she gets plus two plus two for each order attached to it. Then we're running a mean card called Light Paws Emperor's Voice, which is a good card <laughs> to get. Early. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so Light Paws Emperor's Voice is a, a staple card that I was not expecting Wizards to make. So Light Paws basically says whenever you cast an aura spell, you may search your library for an aura spell with the same or less mana value of that spell, that's an enchantment, and attach it to Light Paws. Which is insane. Which yes. is insane, right? The reason why this is good is with like if we go into the um, enchantment matters deck, if you run like strong back, mm -hmm. which gives creatures plus two plus two for each order and equipment, which strong back's not listed on here for some reason. I know because uh Shield by Faith is on here for some reason. Ah. Um if you get strong back, you can get ancestral mask, which will double the power of enchantments, right? Wow. You run cards like Ethel Armor, Ethel right. Armor can tutor uh Aquas form. You can run on all that glitters and all that glitters. You get a slew of options to get for enchantments. Nice. And um, a win and two win conditions in this deck, that f f or three win conditions to follow through this deck for late game, is you got retether. Okay. Um, this is under recursion. Under recursion. retether costs three generic and a white. Right. And right. it returns all auras from your graveyard to the battlefield attached to a creature. 
All right. Then another card has got Mental the Ancients. Mental the Ancients is pretty busted. So Mental the Ancients costs three generic, two white. It's an enchantment aura. When Mental the Ancients is the battlefield, you may return any number of target auras and or equipment cards from your graveyard to the battlefield attached to enchanted creature. Enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one for each aura and equipment attached to it. Wow. So there's two ways to get back in the game. The third way to get back in the game that that that's there is you can run the angel, the blue white angel. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm trying to remember her name, uh, Bruno Light of Alabaster. Right. She's a big hitter at the late game. She's for the slower game. If you need to, she costs three generic, two white, a blue, five five flying vigilance. When Bruno Light of Alabaster attacks or blocks, you may attach any number of auras on the battlefield. From uh, and put auras from your hand or the graveyard onto her. Nice. So, so with this deck, is it? Um, are there any particular good matchups or particular bad matchups? Um, good matchups are games are like card. Like there's a segment of cards that that really hurt this game. Like, um, the nice thing about this deck, it's so fast that removal doesn't touch it very much, especially when you get the first player out of the game. Like, when right. we played this game, I played fair, where I attacked each player individually one at a time, so one person wasn't just getting the brunt. Right. You know? Um, so the nice thing about this deck is it's so fast that removal is not great uh, against it, because it's too, okay. too fast. But when playing like I, like I do... Um, cards like uh, return target creature to its owner's hand hurts. Return mm -hmm. all attacking creatures to its owner's hand hurts. Because like if you return a creature that's buffed up with enchantments, all the enchantments go in the graveyard. Right. Right. Hence right. why retether and natural mantle the ancients are really solid in this deck it's to help build you back up. This deck, this deck likes to pace itself out. Right. You're not playing every creature card you can. You play a couple. You play one creature. You play a couple exalted creatures. Help off with the team. So on board whites, you have a creature in your hand. It's easier to rebuild up. And I sure. got my wife to play this deck, and she she learned that really quick. She's like, you know, as long as I hold on to some of these creatures and you destroy my creature, I can really get aggressive, especially with the equipments of the deck. Nice. And the recursion is pretty solid. Okay. Fair enough. So, mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe you've convinced me it's worth a, worth a look to play Rafiq. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um. So nice. So with this deck, do you play it often? Um, is it something that you keep in your back pocket for specific matchups or specific games? Or where would you put this deck as far as uh, um, aggressiveness as far as the, the pods that you play in? Right. So this deck is very aggressive. Um, it's not super aggressive when I'm attacking every player individually, like at one at a time, going one player, then to the next player, the next player. When I'm mm -hmm. dividing the damage up like that, it's more of a fair deck and it's easier to handle. Where if I were to focus on one player, I can get, you, I get that one player out of the game like fast. But gotcha. it's not fun. It's not fun to bring that one player. So this deck's become more of a 1v1 kind of deck. It's not CEDH by any means. Right. But it's fast enough that in Commander, like 1v1, it could be like a level 8, a level 9 deck where the power level is just pff, crazy. Right. Like, I think level 10 will smash this deck because this does this deck doesn't run any free spells and you can counter stuff with Force of Will if you got one. You know what I'm saying? Sure, sure. Um, but this deck was also built around a... Uh, this deck was accidentally built powerfully at first. Like, I, okay. like this deck started as like a budget deck. Uh -huh. And it was wiping player a player out of the game by turn four, turn five. No. Then I had to dumb it down. I had to dumb it down. Then <laughs> later on, when my play group kind of dissipated, I'm like, I'm going to build this deck up. And Wizards kept printing out more powerful cards. Nice, nice. Yeah. Well, it sounds good. I, I like it. I'm I'm sorry that we're not closer, so we couldn't play on a more regular basis. But we have a chance to do that on Spell Table. What? Uh, when is that actually? Um, Saturdays is when we play. Like today, Saturday, we're the recording, so you'll be able uh -huh. to play tonight. Nice. Okay. Yeah. And what other uh, shows do you have? As a matter of fact. Oh, uh, so every morning, when possible, I try to uh, do a sh morning show called the Morning Coffee Show in the Shell with Super Fast Tortoise. 
And it's just a group of us guys and people who jump on the show and just chit chat about a topic that I come up with every day. Sometimes we're loose about it. Sometimes we're very invigorated by the topic. And it's always an interesting show. Like uh, today's show, we were talking about Ninja Turtles and if they were in Magic Gathering or why it would hurt, why it hurts, to, why, why it would hurt to make a trading card game just on Ninja Turtles because the lore is so exclusive to a certain time frame and then in the turtle world but it right. was fun um wednesdays and fridays i play i play video games like right now i'm in the middle of playing spider-man the sony playstation game um i'm having lots of fun wednesdays i try to do a random show at 4 30 and sometimes i just randomly pop up to a live like i might do a live later today just to uh update my cube because cubes one of my favorite formats to play Nice, nice. Well, what I've got to say that I enjoy most about your shows and being uh, with the guys is um, everybody tries to uh, focus more on the positive aspects and stuff. It's easy to run down magic. There's plenty of things to complain about, but uh, we try to stay positive and keep it. And if we ever do get uh, down on it or whatever, it's only because we worry about uh, the longevity of the game and the health of the game. And uh, it's because we care so much about it. We've made, uh, I feel like we've made a lot of friends, all of us through magic. And uh, that's what we like to concentrate on and stuff. The the gathering, that's always the best part. So, Oh yeah, the gathering is always the best part. Absolutely. Well, I'm going to say thank you very much for sharing this deck with me. I look forward yeah. to having you on here again and talking about some other decks again soon. Whoop, and whoop, uh, again, whoop. thank you very much. Thank you. You rock. You rock. Awesome. <laughs> you too. Escape or end, he hoped to prevail, but he's dead.